Hi and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, no matter what it is you're doing. For the free wire tutorial today, I'd like to share with you my Spiral Flower Doodle Charm. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, but there's a whole Bob Ross style happy accident story attached to it. When I first started working with wire, before I really got my teeth into wrapping cabs and such, I used to just grab some pliers and my wire and doodle in wire, which is something that led to this little happy accident which is a spiral flower doodle. Now I have a project for you today which I'd like to show you on the board in just a moment which shows how these can be something as simple as a single charm on a bracelet, an earring, a very very small pendant, you can of course size it up but why don't we head down to the board and I'll show you how you can create something that's quite dramatic using a little bit of leftover bead soup and repetitive design. So let's head down to the board now. So this is what the little spiral flower doodle charm looks like all by itself. Very, very simple, but quite effective, quite pretty, quite achievable too. And also you can hammer it, so that's always fun. But I have a project on the board which uses a repetitive design aspect. So I've just made the same thing in two different metal colours. So I've got silver alternated with three of the copper and the central copper spiral flower doodle charm is a little bit larger so you can choose to graduate, you can mix your metals, you can do whatever you fancy with a design like this. I found some matched pairs of boho beads and also I had a quarter of a strand of black and white crab agate rather left over. So I've just stranded these up onto a section of wire and added some chain at the back. It does look quite effective once it's all put together. I'm going to teach you how to make the slightly larger charm today, but I will tell you the different sizes of wire or the different lengths of wire rather that you'll need to create a piece like this if you wish to go for that whole ensemble. So let's just slide this up into the corner and just leave a couple of those sitting down right there. So if you wanted to make the slightly larger piece, and this is around about an inch from top to bottom and across, it's about the same. I'm going to use 12 inches of one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. Now I'm demonstrating in raw copper because it shows up nicely on the camera. But as you can see from my design, I've interspersed silver color wire and copper wire together. You could go the whole hog, bearing in mind if you're looking to hammer this, bronze wire and silver coated wire do look quite good hammered. Raw copper is absolutely beautiful hammered. Some of your colored wires, some of your other fancy colored wires might not enjoy the hammering quite so much. So I have my approximately 12 inches of wire to work with and like I said I'm going to demonstrate the slightly larger version of the design. I'm going to start by making a three coil spiral in the centre. Now in my smaller pieces there are two coils. For my smaller pieces I'm using nine inch lengths, again of that one millimetre or 18 gauge wire, but for my central focal piece, and this is what I'm showing you, it's a 12 inch length. So both of my ends are flush, we're likely to lose a little bit at the end anyway. I'm going to start with a reasonably large aperture in the middle, so start rotating that wire around with my round nose pliers until I get the first section going. I'm just going to switch now to my flat facing pliers, my favourite sparkle handle, bent chain nose pliers, there's not much sparkle left in them, I have had them for about 10 years now I would say, and I'm going to rotate that spiral around three times. So let's just move that nice and slowly. So I've started, I've gone once, twice and a third time around and the wire is just coming away from that spiral form as we look at it. Now it's much easier to get good hammering on that central spiral before you make the rest of the flower. So what I'm going to do is pull that wire away at approximately 90 degrees. It doesn't need to be exact. And I'm going to grab my mini block from my friends at ImpressArt and my chasing hammer from the good folk at Beadalon. So what I'm going to do is to just cover up the section where the wire is coming away from that triple spiral and I'm going to point my finger down so I'm less likely to boink the fingertips with that hammer. I'm looking to strike the hammer straight down. Mm -hmm. 
Now it is very, very common for the wire to want to gap apart, but you can just push that back into position. We'll come back and hammer the rest of that later on. What I found as I was experimenting with this design is that if, if I didn't hammer that central spiral, once the floral doodle had been created, it was quite difficult to get some good access to that central spiral. You don't have to hammer any of it at all. Just if you do want to, you might want to hammer that little bit by itself. Now for pretty much the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to be using my round nose pliers until we start with that finishing up with the wrapped loop at the top there. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers. If you wanted to, you could pop some marks using a marker pen onto those pliers around about a quarter from the shallow end and then around about a quarter from the largest end. The only reason I say that is because it means you will get a repetitive size on the outside loop and the inside loop. Now you can, as I do, just eyeball it. It's absolutely fine. So if I hold that spiral section of wire up at the moment, you can see my wire has come around the outside and is now leaving at approximately 90 degrees. I want to have the open section towards me. So what we're going to do now is use the imaginary marker or the actual marker if you prefer at the widest end of your pliers and we're going to start rotating the long tail of wire around to create that petal like shape and I've started by rotating the pliers and then I'm holding the pliers in position and pulling the tail of wire back towards the center of the spiral. So I've got my first little petal in position like so then I would use the shorter end, or sorry, the narrower end of the pliers. I'm just going to pop those back in and pull the wire back across. Now this is very easy to do, kind of difficult to show you because my hand wants to get in the way. So if I push the wire back outwards again and remove those pliers, you'll see that we have a large loop on the outer shape and a smaller loop on the inner shape. Now it's very, very easy to adjust that a little bit later. If it's not quite narrow enough, you can indeed adjust that as you go. So I'm just going to put some extra heat into the next piece of wire. It does work hard and as you're putting some bends into that wire, it sends the energy along that copper and you end up with a, quite a firm wire to work with, even with my beautiful raw copper. So again, I'm starting to rotate around with those round nose pliers. And what I'm doing is I'm just removing them and having a look to see if I think that this second petal is going to be the same size as the first. It looks like it might be slightly larger, so I'm just going to very very gently I'm rotating around as if I'm revving my motorbike like so and I'm trying to get those to line up so that they'll be equal sizes. Pop that, pop that set of pliers back in and then draw the tail of wire across back towards the middle of that spiral section. We would then pop in with the shorter side or the narrower end of the pliers and just pull that wire back out again. So if I just pull this and push with my thumb and then I can use the pliers in the position that they're in to push so that that inner curve sits as close to the center of that spiral as possible. Now at the end of this section, which will be creating all of these lovely loops, you do have the opportunity to just tighten things up and move things around a little bit. So if it's slightly imperfect, don't worry. So what I will do now is I will continue around using the exact same process until I get almost to the end. So I've continued using the exact same technique until I have travelled almost all the way around that triple spiral section. You'll notice that there's a teeny bit of a gap just here. Let's get that into the light. I haven't completely filled the spaces and there's a good reason for that. We've still got a couple of inches of wire to create our wrapped loop at the end. I'm going to show you now how to refine the design and finish off in the easiest possible way to create that wrapped loop. So you'll notice I've stopped a little bit short of completely filling the space around the outside of that spiral and that's because I want to take time to make sure that my design is flat. Part of the nature of this design is you're putting a lot of springiness into the wire so it tends to twist and turn slightly. So what we would do is take a few minutes to make sure that all of those segments are indeed flat. You can use broad flat pliers for this if you prefer and what I'm doing is I'm just pushing gently towards that inner spiral 
to make sure that all of those inner loops are sitting as close to the spiral as I can get them and even very very quickly just flattening it down it's starting to look a little bit more like a floral doodle than anything else. So another thing that I'm going to do is just tighten up some of these little connections close to that central spiral and I'm not pushing very hard at all very very gently just drawing those looped sections towards one another and this just gives me the opportunity to make everything sit exactly where I want it to. Notice that the spiral was a bit tight on one side so I've just opened that out slightly if it's a little bit wide you can just push that in a little bit and what we're looking to do is just get a nice smooth flow to that doodle as if it's just a marker pen and you're on the phone to somebody and you're just doodling away in one great big long swooping swirl. So once we're happy with that section of the design you now have an opportunity to give it another light hammering. So back in with my mini block and hammer. I'm not going to go overboard, what I am going to do is try to keep my fingers down as close to 90 degrees as possible to protect them, but I'm also endeavouring to keep the whole thing flat. What I never want to happen is for one of these sections to lift, sit on top of another piece, and then for me to be hammering on top of one piece of wire on top of the other. So even with a little light hammering on just the one side you can see it's starting to behave already. What I don't want to do is hammer very far beyond this kind of bend down just at the end here because I'll want this section of wire to do some cool stuff in a minute. So we need to be very careful about how we hammer the rest of the design. So overall I'm quite happy with how that's sitting. Even though this has been hammered, you still have the opportunity to just close up some of those gaps and tighten your design. So one of the ways in which I'm going to refine this is just to pinch that section together and then put some heat and warmth into this tail of wire and draw it up and away at 90 degrees. Give or take, doesn't have to be exact. We just want it to be pulled away from that main floral design. Anywhere that you weren't able to hammer because it was too close to that tail of wire, you can give that a hearty old squish with your flat pliers anyway. What I'm going to do now is to create a wrapped loop with this tail of wire. Bearing in mind I want the wrapping to sit down here but the loop itself to sit proud of the floral design. So I'm going to grip that wire where I think it will fit best. Put approximately a right angle bend coming away so you can see if we pop this down flat that's the kind of thing we're looking for. It's a bit like a pin at the moment. So then we're going to use our round nose pliers to create a circular form just on the end here. Draw that all the way around. You can make that as tight as you want it to. I've threaded all of mine onto another piece of 18 gauge or one millimeter wire. So you can take these loops down quite small. What we're looking to do is to ensure that this neck between the floral design and the loop is long enough so that when it sits up, the loop is just above those flower petals. So let's just grip that loop up at the top. You can give that a squish if you prefer. And then we're going to draw that all the way around the neck of the design. It's a little bit close and tight in there now, which is why I've brought that away from the design at an angle. So it's harder to show than it is to do. Slightly loose and baggy on that coil. So to fix that up, I'm just going to give that a gentle squeeze. If it's at all possible, keeping the same number of loops on your wrapped loop section here, the same number of coils rather, is ideal. But if you can't do that, then don't overly worry. What we're looking to do is make it look as tidy as we possibly can. Let's just see if we can get another rotation around. So making sure that we're putting force into the correct piece of wire. And then we're going to trim away that end section, look twice, cut once, and in that way you don't end up in quite so many tears. I have cut a lot of the wrong wire in my life as a jewellery maker. Once you've got your nice flat floral doodle spiral design, 
and you've got this weirdly angled wrapped loop. I'm just going to make sure that those wrappings are nice and tidy. And I'm going to pinch everything with my non-dominant hand and draw that essentially bail back into the centre of the design. And there you have yourself, let's just get that straight up the centre, there you have yourself the spiral flower doodle charm. So there you have your spiral flower doodle charm. All of the information you need to create your own. Before I love you and leave you today though, I'm going to just pop you back down to the board very briefly to have a quick look at what the whole project looks like if you wish to recreate a design similar to the one I've showed you. So I created this copper piece with you just now. That was 12 inches of that 18 gauge one millimeter wire. I created this smaller one before recording and that's nine inches again of one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. Now to create the finished piece I have on the desk here, I've added some 10 to 12 millimeter crab agates. These are just a quarter strand of beads that I had left over from a previous project. And I've popped those either side of each one of those spiral flower doodles. In addition to that, I've raided my bead soup stash. These are, I believe, Jesse James boho beads, and I managed to find some quick pairs in the large box of beads I have available to me. So you don't have to crack open a new strand if you don't want to. You can use it with your bead soup, your odds and ends if you like, but it can be super effective. As I mentioned, you can just add it as the end of extender chain or making very, very quick earrings, charms, etc, etc. But I love to see them layered up. You can even pop them over the top of each other if you wish to. It's quite effective, looks quite crazy sometimes. But I don't know, maybe that's the look you're going for. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with me and my spiral flower doodle charm. I've had a lot of fun with that and I hope that you will too. Looks quite cool, I think, over the top of a sweater. Now it's coming in towards sweater weather, but you could equally wear that in the summer. Have yourself a beautiful day, and I look forward to catching up with you again here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel very soon. Bye for now.